6.05 p.m. Here at Commissioner Chambers, here at City Hall, 5332 East U.S. Highway 83, here at Leoranda City, Texas. At this time, uh, we have the invocation by Commissioner Garza and the, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance for, with uh, Commissioner Ramirez. Or, and, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to get together and conduct city business. We ask that you guide us and assist us in making uh, the right decisions. We ask that uh, you bless the people that are present here, and we ask that uh, you bless our soldiers in armed ways, and uh, we ask that you bless our police officers down the street. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Guerrero, will you please uh, conduct the roll call? Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Villarreal? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Garza? Here. Commissioner Salinas is absent. Commissioner Ramirez? Here. Commissioner Jones is also absent. You have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, first, or next business in order is letter C, departmental reports. Ms. Bayas? Mayor and Commissioners, you do have members of the departments uh, here present. You also have the reports in their package. Uh, there are departments that had certain activities this month. We had the police department with their national night out. Substantial amount of numbers off the successful year as it has been in the past. Mr. Noe Castillo is here, Chief Noe Castillo. Uh, he's also working on the uh, concealed weapons ordinance. We, uh, just to uh, highlight on national night out, uh, we had a good turnout. Um, the uh, tickets that were sold were 600 tickets, and uh, that was for every adult. So every adult had two to three people, which you're looking at about 2,000, 1,800 uh, plus. Uh, uh, everybody was there participating, and you know, we want to thank the public and uh, everybody from the city and uh, all the uh, people that contributed to, to the event. We wouldn't have been able to do it without the, everybody that assisted. You know, so it was our seventh annual, and it turned out really, really good. Mayor, you won third place in Halloween contest, so, you know, uh, Rupi did. Yes, I did, sir, and I'm proud. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was a really, really good event, and uh, we look forward to it every year. Um, and I just want to thank everybody. Um, we, uh, we're we also working on something with Christian for for the uh, January 2016 for the open carry. Um, it does, the open carry does not, uh, the law does not allow anybody to open carry till after January 2016. So uh, we'll be putting something out there for for the, the people to know uh, what they can do and, and uh, you know where they can carry and where they can't. Uh, we'll be working with Christian on that so we can get something out with it. Any questions about it? Sir, just to commend you for uh, for the national night, night out. It was it was an excellent event, well attended, and uh, people that were there. It was a great event for the community. Excellent. Sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Uh, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, I don't see Chief uh, Reyes for the fire department, but uh, they had a whole month full of presentations on fire prevention week. <coughs> uh, going down on uh, municipal court, they've been working on their cases. It's coming down the number that were outstanding. Public Works is uh, presented here by Fernando Guerra, Public Works Director. He just completed a uh, yes, good evening, city wide clean out. Mayor City Council. Uh, just to let you all know, okay, this uh, past coming months, we're going to be uh, starting to work on the new streets that are going to, now that the budget kicked in, we're going to start working on some partial new streets uh, that are coming up, sir. Okay. Uh, going to start working on uh, Spanish Oak on 6th Street also, so. So, some so areas that we're going to start working on for primary streets. You also had the number of lights. Put out in Los Trevinos oh, that yeah, were started already for the uh, installation of new street lighting throughout the city. So hopefully it'll be, uh, be done pretty soon. So thank you, Mr. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any questions? No, sir. Thank you. 
We have Mr. Milan, Planning and uh, Code Enforcement Department. You're working on ordinance that will be presented for the next council meeting? That's correct. The, uh, some of the proposed new ordinances are coming up in the next uh, couple of meetings would be the uh, new uh, health uh, regulations in town and also the noise ordinance finally coming to place. Any questions for Mr. Milano or any activity in the Department of the Planning Department? As a matter of fact, to add that uh, uh, we consulted with some of the other municipalities, including the city of West Laco, city of McAllen, and they are willing to, to uh, orient us better on how to perform those uh, type of uh, inspections. When do you foresee us initiating the first steps of that? Within the next couple of months, yeah. Fully legally. Done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I know that we have also the library sent the report. I do not see Ms. Folk, but they just celebrated their 25, uh, 25th anniversary. It was well attended and it's very nice. And they continue partnering with many community services. Um, on tourism, we also have Ms. Sarah. Yeah. Go ahead, Tara. You might want to get the microphone close to you. My mic Hello, everyone. For the tourism department, we're working on a new event. After Viva Mexico, we got a good turnout, so we're ready for the next event, which will be a toy drive concert uh, right after the parade. I'm working with the Chamber of Commerce, so they will be announcing the parade winner at the event and we're going to have four different groups and we're going to encourage the attendants to donate a toy for the Crime Stoppers. So this will also serve as a opportunity for the Boys and Girls Youth Club to fundraise there through concession sales. So that is our next event for the tourism and we're also assisting with the Halloween at the park. That covers the <coughs> events. We're also in the beginning stages of coordinating uh, an event for the veterans. It would be um, a lunch, possibly a lunch, after they go to the cemetery on Wednesday, November 11th. So that's in the beginning phases. I'll definitely let you guys know so that you all can attend. And that would take place at the VFW. Okay. That pretty much covers the events. We're still working on the Kelsey Bath Museum and Event Center. We're continuing the construction, the lighting, and things of that nature. And the parade is scheduled for when? December 4th. December 4th. And that usually runs from 6 to 7, so our main event will start from 7 to midnight. Okay. And we're coordinating, of course, with uh, other agencies. Yes, I'm coordinating with the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Crime Stoppers, the Boys and Girls Youth Club, local businesses are sponsoring the event, so it won't be a cost to the city, and the toys that we get donated are going to go back to Crime Stoppers so that they can pass them out during their toy <coughs> in the middle of December is when they usually do that. Any questions? Thank you. We do have Parks and Rec who have started the registration and uh, Mr. Farley's had a doctor's appointment, could not be present, but Mr. Eric Escamilla will present and also the staff of the boys and girls that have been initially yes. uh, hired. So right here we have, over there to the right side, we have Val, and then Valerie, boys and girls, too. and then Saida, and then up the second row, we have uh, Ricky, and then you, boys and girls. Welcome on board. <laughs> Is that starting when now, Mr. Yeah, well, we're starting registration on the on the 19th, Monday. Yeah, they have actually started the registration. Um, they have called each member that was on the roster from last year. They have put out flyers to every school campus. Uh, they've got their lessons plans in place, and uh, I don't know, Ms. Valsh, you are the uh, coordinator for the instructors. Um, you want to step up and kind of give a... Hello, good afternoon. Um, like Ms. Mayo was saying, we have uh, gone to all of our schools in the district. We have left uh, flyers. We have advertised in the town choir and in Lasse. 
Um, we are working very hard to uh, get our students back that we had during the summer, um, and we just want to try to make it a really, good, really, really, really good um, coming year for them. So we're working really hard. Our lesson plans are in order. Everything else is in order. So we just need our kids. Any questions? I know if you have uh, 50 children <coughs> registered for the program, uh, what's what's our goal? Our goal is 60 students. 60? Yes, sir. And is, what is the registration fee for that? Registration fee is $25 per child per uh, month. For the a month. Per month. A month. Yes, sir. Sorry. How are we doing with coaches? Did we find all the coaches for the uh, the flag football and some of these? Yes, uh, definitely. We got yes. it. Yes. We're we gonna start on the for flag football. We're gonna start on Tuesday. Okay. Uh, 20. Like that. And our tackle football. We're gonna start on over 20. And how's the uh, planning with that monster? Is it Monster Mash with the Boys and Girls Club? As, as well? a matter of fact, we have changed the name to Halloween at the Park. Halloween at the Park. Yes. Okay. Um, we have the flyers ready. They need to be uh, sent to and last to Town Choir. We are going to be posting them up at several businesses that allow us to post it up. We are doing an event program, and that is uh, in the final stages. And we continue getting sponsors. So we're welcoming uh, businesses who want to go ahead and um, give candy, participate, be part of our event. So we're getting there, already almost done with it. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Great. Any questions? Thank you. So what are we, how many games after all are we going to be playing and for us with football? Black football. Black football we're playing a total of seven games. Seven games, yes. and it'll be one game per week, right? Uh, two actually. Two? Black football. And then okay. tackle will be one game per week. Okay. Yeah. Tackle. Yeah, in total of seven games. They can play this All right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. UC Department continues, sir. Uh, they're working with their new budget. Uh, we are closing the, the budget year that ended September 30th. We did meet our uh, revenue projections, and some of them did go over, so we're in good standing. This is an unaudited report, um, but that is the latest uh, postings from our, from our bookkeeping and our accounting program. Uh, we will continue to work so we can fully close the program, get it ready for this audit, so it'll be on time for June. Uh, unless I missed out on any departmental reports, that would be it. Unless y'all have any questions on any of the issues or community events or happening. No, there's quite a bit of events coming up. Obviously, October and then December. So definitely look forward to attending those events and having the community participate. So looking forward to all these events. It's going to be a full calendar. Show. A public hearing. No, there's a public, public forum. Public forum. I, mean, public I didn't know. see it here. No? Okay. No okay. All right. Next uh, business in order. Any other departmental reports or any of the department heads that would like to <coughs> share anything else before we move on? The wonderful things that are happening in Rio Grande City. All right. Let's continue then. Next uh, business in order is uh, item two: consent agenda. And it's all matters listed under consent agenda or considered to be routine by the commission and will be enacted by <laughs> one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items. However, if discussion is desired, that items or item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. We have approval of departmental travel requests and approval of minutes from previous meeting. We do have a handout. And I see there were no travel requests. There's being a submitted. Up. There's a hand up for the planning department. Okay. Uh, Mr. Milanes uh, will be traveling for the residential building inspector class. We do need to have another person certified under the insurance standards organization. We do need to to meet this criteria. We're working okay. in trying to get um, uh, the building standards up to date. We are working under 2006 standards right now, and the latest I think is 2015 or. So we're, we're nine years behind. All right, so we're moving forward on that, obviously. Thank you, Mr. Milan. 
Anything else on the minutes? As well. There is no corrections. I move that we approve. Okay. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion on this item? No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Sign. Motion carries. Um, next uh, business in order is um, number three ordinances. Letter A, first reading and approval of ordinance number 2015 11, amending chapter 15 501D. No parking zone on FM 3167, a specific distance from the entrance exit drive of West Ridge Estates Phase 1 subdivision. So, Chief, would you like to? Uh, the, uh, the recommendation to amend the ordinance uh, has come forth because uh, we've had a couple of funerals there that have uh, uh, you know, brought in a lot of people that have been parked in the, that area and uh, it actually goes beyond the whole, uh, to the, the, the area that this is a no parking zone. I think it's 326 feet south of the entrance of the subdivision and 326 feet north of the subdivision. What uh, we're having at that location is uh, we, uh, you know, if it's a big funeral that somebody knows a lot of people, that's that's actually the case. The funeral home, uh, the, the area of the parking area gets filled up due to congestion. And uh, if we were to enforce this uh, ordinance the way it is right now, we'd have people crossing the, the street from the other side of the highway. So that is a safety issue that, uh, you know, the recommendation would be what state law uh, recommends or anything else that... Uh, the, the council would want to, the commission would want to uh, impose at that part, maybe uh, a little bit over 30 feet, uh, if that's so, so the uh, exit would be visible a little bit better. Um, but this is a, the issue that we're having at location. State law requires 30 feet, uh, Chief. I'm sorry. Uh, state law requires 30 feet. It's 30 feet from. That's your recommendation. Yes. You know, it could be extended to 40 feet uh, if uh, that's all right. But the the uh, what, what happens with the the way it's written up right now. It, uh, it covers the whole area and there's nowhere for anybody to park and what happens is that sometimes people come to a funeral service, they don't go to church, they go to park first so it, it's real hard to actually be at that location when that's going on. It was at 326, it's being reduced to 30 feet to each side of the entrance? To each side of the entrance, so yes, correct. total of 60 feet? Yes. <coughs> And people were notified there in that subdivision as far as uh, I uh, this just talked to Ms. Sanchez, she's uh, on the board of, uh, of that uh, subdivision mm -hmm. and um, she uh, she actually uh, understood what we were what I was talking about at that point and you know it doesn't happen quite it doesn't happen that often that you have a funeral that uh, attracts that many people I think the last one there was uh, two funerals going at the same time so you know it's well known uh, people and people paying their respects to uh, to the families and uh, you know that that would uh, cause a little bit of chaos if we would start going over there and handing out citations or, or warnings. So that that that's the issue there. It's, it's a safety issue for for most. Ms. Parts. Molina was also, I think she's the president of the homeowners. Ms. Anna Molina was also uh, contacted. Uh, obviously, she she was the one who first started this ordinance. Um, she was not very happy about this change. But she said if the PD would be present during the funerals to conduct traffic control and assist for people coming out of Westridge, she would be okay with it. Well, but, our, our but the vehicles are not actually parking on the roadway, are they? They're out, they're they're out on, on the, the grass. shoulder. You know, you might have one vehicle that will park that way, you know, and, and we could patrol that as, aspect of it. But uh, when you have uh, the amount of vehicles that were there, there's over 100 uh, yeah. yards in, in each side, it's real hard to control. Uh, that situation. Uh, I, I, re I remember we, that particular. Correct, because we do escort these funeral services, so you know we only have certain yeah. people working. It's real hard to have a couple of officers just doing that at that point. But uh, you know th this would be a solution to the to that uh, issue. And again, you know it doesn't happen that quite often. Uh, it's always, always unfortunate when somebody loses a loved one, but uh, when they do, right. people want to come in and pay their respects and you know not be worried about a citation. So yeah, in my experience, there, uh, Chief, I know I live on that area and. Uh, <clears throat> Feeling over 45 miles an hour. Uh, yes, sir. And, and obviously, when there's a funeral, in my experience, you know, seen several, you know, over the years, uh, people tend to slow down. They Correct. see all this, you know, cars and the signs. So, so I respect people slow down as well. So I don't think it's a big issue, but I think that you know, I do uh, agree with the recommendation. So I'm going to make a move to uh, go ahead and make a motion to approve this recommendation. Okay. I think. I have a motion. 
to approve. We have a second first reading, and then we'll have a second, assuming down the road, Ms. Beth, is that? 16 days later. 16 or days next, later? At okay. The next council meeting. All right, so we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? Yes, let me, let me just suggest something. The, uh, that, that entrance into that subdivision, uh, Chief, District. is there any way that the state can, uh, can, uh, can paint, uh, can stripe it with a yellow? That's something that we could ask. I think that uh, uh, there's some certain control that the city has toward that highway because it is maintained uh, within the city, but you know, that's something we could, we could look into. Maybe we can look into it and yes, they sir. might be able to do it. There might be some other things that, that could be able to be done that we just need to see if that, that's okay, maybe rumblers or something so people will park and it'll be defined, uh, you know, where the parking zone starts and where, you know, no parking yeah. zones. And it's really defining the 30 feet so that, that way as they're exiting, is uh, it won't yeah. be a, a Correct. An accident, yes. really, is to make sure that it is clear of that traffic. Yes, yeah, so they, they, they won't be any obstruction when uh, okay. anybody's leaving the subdivision. It will be a safe exit. So. All right. Very good. Thank you. You have a motion and a second. All right, we have a motion to approve. We have a second for the discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. It carries. Let's move on to uh, number four, resolutions. Letter A, discussion and possible action to approve. Resolution number 2015-30, authorizing the purchase of an automated water meter system and designating the financing option for said purchase. Mayor and Commissioners, uh, I think we've been working on this for like over almost a year, Mr. Klein. And uh, we've been having issues in our water laws. We've been having issues with uh, tampering with water meters. And in order to come up to date in this new technology, uh, we're looking at different companies and the one company that we came across was RG3. They are present. Uh, They're present here, Ron. We've got Ron and, and Ryan. They were also at PML. You have in your package the financing options and the, you also have a booklet, I think, a distribution booklet on the product. So Are Ron, these meters affected by any magnets? I'm going to let Ryan handle that question. All right. So, okay. Yes, sir. Um, as, as any meter, whether it be direct read or um, an automated system, there is going to be a, a way to tamper with it uh, okay. through a very strong magnet. That hasn't really changed, but what we've done is we've created tools that are able to pinpoint when that has happened and be able to alarm you monthly, so you, you would see monthly when those tampering ha has occurred. So we haven't been able to actually um, deter it from happening because that's just, if we all, you know, if someone can break it or steal it, they're going to break it or steal it. Uh, so it's still going to happen, but again, we've created um, a feature that's able to detect that and detect it all the way down to the day and the hour that the magnet was put on there. <laughs> Not necessarily the magnet itself, but the meter will detect it. It stopped working, so somehow, some way, your meter isn't, it's going to show that it's not working. So it's, it's detected so you can go check that out and, and why it stopped. So there's nothing on the market as of now that something will pop up and say meter or magnet detected. It's just telling you your meter has stopped. There's a reason for it. It's working perfectly fine uh, before your meter readers and after your meter readers, but now it's kind of stopped and why it's happening. Can you explain how that signal is going to be sent to, to our system? Sure. If it's damaged or stolen or broken? How it can not be sent to the system? How will it be sent? Can you explain It'll be the sent process? Through, sure, absolutely. It's, it's through RF frequency, okay? And it's going to be sending its signals in the 902 to 928 government unlicensed band. This is the band that's been allotted by the government to be used for everything from baby monitors to uh, some radio frequency uh, walkie-talkies to the metering system, okay? And in that band, we're only allowed to be able to transmit up to a full one watt of power, in which we do, and this allows us to be able to transmit consistently through, whether it be water, mud, debris, whatever builds up in the meter pit over time, <coughs> allows us to be able to send through that without, without any problems. How long have you been uh, using this system? That system was designed in 2005. It's been in the ground since 2006, that particular model. Um, it's a little bit um, newer model than a lot of the competition, all the similar drive-by systems. Um, and, and 
like anything else, as you get newer, you get smarter, you get more efficient. So we're able to provide a, a more efficient system that's a two-way system. We're not constantly sending radiation and uh, signals up into the air. We only send them when you call for them, being a two-way system. So we only send a signal 12 to, say, 13 times a year, maybe with a reread in there. <clears throat> what that allows us to do is, like I said, that one, be a green technology that's not consistently using energy from the battery, as well as that's what allows us to transmit at a full one watt of power when we do send a signal we're able to, because we only do it 12 times, we're sending it at a full one watt of power, which gets important as the system's life goes on. It also allows us to provide the industry leading warranty at a full 20, uh, 25 years. <clears throat> it's a full 12 years, so anything that happens in electronics in that unit for 12 years, you pop it off, you send it into RG3, and you get a new one, no questions asked. If there's something wrong with it, you get a new one, okay? And then 13 years after that, it's a prorated shared cost program that increments from 20% up to about 90% in the 24th year. And what type of training would you provide for the staff? Sure. Um, with any of these systems, um, you have to manage them. It's not something that you set it and forget it. We know that, and we've built around the customer service side of these. Um, just because we've seen systems that have been put in the ground, they're not managed properly, and over time, they become more of a headache than they ever were intended to be, and you don't get the features, you don't get the things that you actually paid for. So <clears throat> we've built a plan. We come for three months, one month, or one day per month, <clears throat> and we do that so that we can come in the first day and we get all of the logistics, all the simple things figured out because they'll show you how to read the system. And then we let life happen. We let 30 days of, <clears throat> of leaks, we let 30 days of questions in the field, we let all these things come up where that second month that we come in, we can get really, we can get down to the real questions of what's, what's going on in the system. So we start really being able to do the troubleshooting as well as the data logging. Um, we can start working on some of those features and showing, showing your, uh, your operators on, on how do I get the revenue out of these units? How do I create reports? How do I go out and inspect those reports? <clears throat> then the third time, we actually come in and we almost do, it's almost more of a, uh, of a quiz. We, we want to show, we want you to show your, your operators, your billing clerks, we want them to show that you know how to use it because we know, again, if, if you don't know how to use all these features that we're providing for you, one, it was a waste of your money, and two, you're not going to be as satisfied with it as you should be, and we know you will be if you'll be able to use it. Um, <clears throat> now, on the back side of that, we know that it takes a lot of knowledge to be able to troubleshoot one of these systems if you get in a bind. So what we've done is we've created, we've got really good distributors, but we don't rely on our distributors to be able to service you 100%. So what we've done is we've created um, RG3 product service specialists. And so we have somebody, two people in Texas actually, who their full job is to essentially have a bread route from system to system. So they visit every, sys every automated system that we have <clears throat> in Texas and simply, it might be just a swing through and, hey, how you doing? Everything's great. Okay, see you. Or it might be, hey, okay, you've got problems. I'm here for two days. Anybody so, here in the Valley is using the system right now? We have one automated system in the Valley. That's El Tanco. El Tanco. El Tanco. Yes, sir. Stay, it's actually rode with us on a demonstration. Where? El Tanco. El Tanco. El Tanco. El Tanco Water Supply just went to a large upgrade in their system with new water tanks and uh, new water lines and all their meters are now digital. We did drive with Ron and Ryan and uh, Araceli and I and as you know they were going down the, the route, uh, the laptop which is in, included in this proposal was just picking up and all the greens were being read. Um, what takes the public utility department two, two and a half weeks uh, would basically be done in a couple of days. Because we read, when we were over there, it took us 15 minutes to read 486 meters. Uh, and we were driving slow. Kind of slow. But, uh, There's definitely three levels of revenue that occur when you move to an automated system. You've got uh, the obvious water revenue, uh, simply from inaccurate old meters. Okay, so we're going to fix that. That's, that's step one. So you're gonna, that's your largest revenue. You've got a time revenue. So we've talked about how long it takes currently to put boots on the ground to read the meters currently. Yeah. You're going to move into be able to, like I said, be able to do that one man or woman be able to do that in a two to four hour period. As, so you're not pulling boots off of other projects and those projects, those pits get filled in when it rains and you're not going to go back and readdress. So it eliminates that as well as, like I mentioned, the, the management tools. We have a leak, a tamper, a backflow, high consumption, low consumption, battery warnings. Flow, in, flow rate indicator. So we provide a lot of management tools that also build revenue. So now you know when you have a leak, when you have a backflow, when you have someone out there spinning the meter around during the month whenever they think that you're not watching, 
now we can see those things. So all these tools that we have, again, the third level of revenue for you. And in Tanque, for example, uh, how long have they had this system again? They were installed, they've been in about a year and two months. About a year? Now, yes, sir. So prior to the system to now, what's been the difference in water loss percent percentage now that you have this system, or they have this system? Do you have any numbers? I do not have their numbers, no, sir. They have indicated that there was, they, they were very happy with it. I do not have the numbers on it. Okay. I do know that um, Union Water Supply is also looking at this, uh, and I know Gilbert and I have been talking also, you know, how we can work something out between Union Water Supply and the city, being that some of the meters in Union Water Supply are inside the city limits. Also, since uh, we've installed that, the meter that you see there before you, that's actually a new meter, it's a perpetual meter, so technology has advanced in just a few months in general, but that meter's been in testing for two years now at the AWWA. <coughs> and, uh, um, and what we offer on that is a longer warranty than most standard meters just because of the new technology on that. What we've essentially done, to be short, is we've created a free-floating chamber on the inside that doesn't have any pressure points created by uneven bolts. When a bolts are put into a meter, they create over time torque points. Okay, so we've created a free floating chamber inside that doesn't egg over time, that decreases accuracy. So what we've done is the, the industry standard on a 5 8 by 3 quarter meter is a five year or 750,000 gallons new meter accuracy. So on, that's the industry standard right now. We've, we're offering a 10 year or 1.5 million gallons new meter accuracy. Yeah. So we've doubled the industry standard. So we're, um, we're not only, not only are we leading in the, the electronic side, but as well as the, the brass side as well. The so coach we're running here is for all the existing meters, right? To replace all the existing meters. All five, eight by three quarter residential meters, sir. Okay, so Perfect. in the future, if we have uh, more growth, uh, how much then is it gonna cost a new customer? For, for a, a for another residential yeah. purchase? Right. What do you sell a residential meter for? Uh, well, if we're uh, uh, yeah, we're I think it was 167 yes. per yes. unit was enough. Well, it's going to be the same, you know, until prices increase. 167 per unit, is that correct? I don't see it going up just because of the new situation later on when everything's installed. So that'll be something that the market will entail and uh, brass prices, raw material prices will be. So uh, that'll be just, uh, I guess, like I said, it'll be probably the same until I get work from RG3 materials and all that gone up and go from there. So. And we did talk about this earlier that this are the residential and we are going 100% digital. So that is what we hope the council will approve. Um, obviously, the commercial meters, you got one inch, you got two inch, you got six inch. So those will also come into play. Uh, in other words, our whole system will be digital and we'll have very accurate readings of uh, water usage. The system also allows you to be ready for the future. As we know, electronics are growing faster and faster and technology is growing faster and faster. And, and with this unit, because of the two-way system and because of the one watt of power that I talked about, and you can see the black cap on that has on that meter has a um, little bit of a clip looking on looking thing on it. And what we can do is we can actually migrate that system up to a fixed base system. And what that means is essentially the meters are sending in their data every night. So now all these warnings, we're getting them nightly. Okay, so now we, everything's on demand. We can get live reach, we can get everything just right here from the office. So th that's another great advantage to our product is we're, we're able to come in and put in a, a, a very high-end drive-by system, but it's also ready for the future. It's, it's a two-way system. We can put firmware back into that unit. We can change things about it if we want to, but we can also upgrade it to the next level. So you're, you're, not, just, you're not locked into one level of service right off the bat. Mr. Klein, I know that you've uh, spoken with both Ryan and Ron. Uh, your opinion of the product? Uh, I think it's pretty good. They work pretty good. <coughs> and I recommend to go with it. Thank you, Mr. Klein. And really the question is, what's going to be the return on the investment here? Because we're going to be investing one point, what is the amount? 1.1? Option, right under 1. Two. option two, if we go, and really it's, what's the return on the investment for 1.1? 1. 1 that's that's a very hard question to answer without doing a true water audit and actually getting, because the big question is how much water are you giving away right now? What's your accuracy? Let's say 30%. Right now. 
Um, and I can only go off of systems that we've we've worked with, and that okay. could be comparable or could not. And we've worked with systems that have 40%, and we knock out 22 to 25% of that right off the bat. So, um, but again, that's it's hard for me to give you, and I don't want to give you a definite on that yeah. because it's very dependent on your variable. We'll throw a letter off right now. 30%. 30. I think it's a little bit more than that, Mr. Clark. A little bit more. Okay. What's our water loss right now? 30%. Okay. All right. Anything else, gentlemen? Any, there? any questions? I know that we've been back. Like we also talked to another company, HD. Um, they also came in with something similar. Their warranty is less. Uh, it was also uh, more was more expensive and um, the financing options uh, they had I think at one point some interest and in here we have zero percent interest no down also payment. Also the state will monitor the water loss and they are looking to see to reduce the water loss and they are ready because of the, the drought okay that's mm -hmm. what they are looking for. To try to do something to correct the problem of the water loss. We definitely need to bring down our water loss it yeah. affects also our Funding with the Texas Water Development Board and also USDA. Now, is the financing through your company or? or it's through an affiliate of our company. They do financing directly for us, uh, and they do. They have two other vendors that they work with, but they are primarily through us. Yes, sir. Okay. And if I see here, for example, I'm looking at option two, which is zero down payment, uh, and that it would be for the first year. Yes, sir. So we defer the we defer the first payment for a full year, and what that does is it allows you to build that revenue. We've got multiple municipalities that are two years into their system, and because they had that first year to build that revenue, they've made their payments, but it's been strictly out of the revenue. They haven't had to dip into their budget yet. So it's been a really good way for cities to move into moving into a system that's going to build revenue, and they haven't paid off in four to five years, and they've got another seven years of full warranty, and hopefully another 23 years. Oh, that, makes, that makes sense. And the interest rate would be. It's zero. at zero percent. Zero, zero percent. So zero down, zero percent interest for the first year. That's right. And hence, I, I guess, why you're recommending. I am. I did look at the, the different amount. If you looked at option one, it was less total project cost. and But that would mean that we would only do like the 1,500 meters per year. And that return... Wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do it until maybe the sixth year when all your meters are in place. Uh, option two, like I said, is no down payment, and um, it is 26000 more, but over the course of the four years of payments, you're looking at a difference of right. about 6000 some dollars, okay. uh, something that can be absorbed by the budget of the civil utility department. So how, long, how long will it take you to replace all the meters? That's another question that's uh, very hard to answer, and we would have a pre-construction meeting prior to that would set the on average for us. We, we gear for about 65 meters a day, and there's some days it might be 10 meters downtown with old lines, and there might be days where they're doing 110 um, meters a day rolling through the, uh, the nice subdivision. So it's just, it's, it's very flexible. Um, one thing about that is that it is our company that is installing the, the meters. That's something rare. We are a cradle-to-grave company. We build all the electronics right here in Texas, and as well as we sell it, we support it, we install it, okay? So we're not gonna go out and hire a contractor, subcontract out somebody to put in our product, and then when something doesn't work, blame them or they're blaming us. At the end of the day, RG3 has been the only one to touch your project. RG3 is fully responsible for you. And when you install one of these meters, what's, what's the uh, time that the client would not have access to water, let's say? Approximately five minutes at the five moment. Five minutes? Sorry, so any uh, kind of cracked lines or anything, kind of quick repairs that need okay. done. For those of us that live uh, inside the city limits but get water from another source, uh, I get water from real water supply, how's that going to work with the meter, meter and all that? How, how's that going to be? We're how are they going to read the meter if they don't have the system? That's something that, that we have yeah, to. You do. No. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's not we, there. That's something that Mr. Klein and I talked, and we do have an agreement with Real Water Supply, as we did uh, a talk with El South yesterday, where we're looking at picking those meters up in our reading, and then we basically, it's turned around. Instead of they, they're collecting, we're collecting and sending them the water. That's what we like to do. That we'll, way we make we'll sure we get the city, the mm -hmm. and you all pay them for the yes. water. That way we, that works 
where they uh, where now we will make sure we get data. <laughs> yeah, because we're essentially we're not changing anything as far as billing. Billing is the core; it's the brain. Right, All we do is take a copy of it and we fill in a blank and we send back just the blank that we filled in. Okay. And this company is part of the cooperative purchasing program. And therefore, that we can go and and not having to go out and do a bidding process. Right. Okay. Any other questions, gentlemen? Ladies? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion, Mayor, that we approve this uh, item. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion to, to approve uh, option two. Yes, option two. Option two, as recommended by staff. Any further discussion? We have a second. Any further discussion on this item? For the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Did I hear you say aye? Yes. All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye one more time. Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? That yes, motion carries. Next uh, business in order is uh, letter B. Number four, letter B, discussion and possible action to approve. Resolution number 2015-31, authorizing the application for a credit card and establishing rules for the use thereof. Commissioners, <coughs> we now have in the city one major credit card, American Express, and it is under just my name. Uh, we are now trying to move forward with our depository bank to get a credit card for the mayor and myself. We've had situations where, uh, especially on trips, overnight trips, uh, I have to leave early to make sure that the rooms are registered under the card in order for the rest of the traveling group can check in. Um, these cards are kept here. Um, it would be one card for you, Mayor. I know in the past, Mayor Ruben Biara, former Mayor Ruben Biara had a card, but he turned it in, it was canceled. Um, so that when you are meeting with delegates or uh, officials, you are able to uh, use a card in city business and not have, well, let me have the card and we're back and forth with only one card going back and forth. So we definitely need this other card, Mayor. Okay. Gentlemen, do we have a... And that's only for the mayor? <laughs> Everybody wants one. <laughs> so, I decline mine. All right. So, I shall move that we All right. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. I'll say. <laughs> All right. Hesitantly, but yes, in seconds. All right. Any uh, further discussion on this item? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Next uh, business in order is uh, number four, letter C. Discussion and possible action to approve resolution number 2015-32, adopting the investment policy of Rio Grande City. Uh, Mayor, this is some um, housekeeping and this is to comply with uh, Texas Government Code Chapter 2256, the Public Funds Investment Act. Um, we're not a major city like Dallas or Houston where we have millions to go invest in the market, stocks and bonds, but we definitely, it's still, we have, still have to have the policy. Uh, we did take, I did take the training. So you were trained? Week. Yes, sir. And therefore, uh, this policy is needed every year. And we would become, we would uh, be in compliance. Okay. Retain a motion. Any, any, any discussion? Any questions? I shall move there. Okay. Have a motion to approve resolution number 2015 32. We have a second. Second. Have a second. Any further discussion on this item? For the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Next uh, business in order is uh, number five, contracts and agreements. Uh, letter A, discussion and possible action to approve the financial assistance award agreement agreement in the amount of one million one hundred fifty thousand with the U.S. Department of Commerce, Economic Development Administration for the Los Olmos Creek Drainage Project. Mayor Commissioners, um, congratulations. This is the contract to receive the money. Along with this contract, obviously, there are all the federal regulations and assurances, compliances that we have to uh, comply with in order to administer and use this, uh, this funds. 
This is for the development in front of Walmart. Uh, it will be for drainage improvements in a public street. Uh, it is a major project that is being worked with the Industrial Foundation, the Economic Development Corporation of the city, uh, the county, uh, the city, the developer, major investment in the community. Once this is done, you know, obviously the return on the economic development will be substantial. But we need to start one place, and this is the participation of the city in, this, in the drainage infrastructure. Uh, there are many facets to this project. It can become quite confusing and, and complicated, but we have a, a great team. And I would be myself. We've got um, Ms. Salinda Guillen, Ms. Rose Benavides, um, also on board. So this is this is it, sir. You're this is it. Signing on the dotted line. One million hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yes, sir. Great. And kudos to all staff members, obviously, who are involved in this um, project and securing these funds to all members and all agents or all departments as well. So again, great job. So, any further questions or gentlemen? Well, we've been waiting for it for a long time. <laughs> all right. Okay. We have the motion. I have a motion. We have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion on this item? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Sign motion carries. Next uh, business is in order is letter B, discussion and possible action to approve the memorandum of agreement with the RGCCISD for the use of the chance to be building for the Boys and Girls Youth Club after school program. Mayor Commissioners, you just heard the staff. They are working. They're ready. Um, this just got approved last night at the school board meeting. This building is next to the technology department at the school campus. Uh, the uh, the rental is the one uh, one thousand two hundred per month. That includes all utilities um, and all use of the facilities in the surrounding. They have a big buffet and they have uh, some playground equipment, and they'll be allowing that also. We need it, we're ready to start, and we're hoping the program, uh, once this, this is approved, to start on the, on the 19th. Now, since it's a memorandum, or memorandum of understanding, uh, is that, can it, I guess looking at the amount itself, uh, are we looking at, Possibly, if we could work out anything else to where they're allowing us the opportunity to minimize the 1200 what would the action have to be? That was the, well, the action to you negotiate the amount? Well, let's say we approve today the 1200 However, we, if we do come to terms and work something else out, do we have to come back on this or, or what, do we, what would we yes. have to do? Yes, yes sir. this is for this agreement, and this is the way it was approved last night. If we make any changes, it would have to go back to the school district. Um, but we can approve it this, in this manner and then go back to start negotiating again with the school. Okay. From October to May of next year. Because we're looking at the, the year, right? The entire year? It is October the year. To uh, or, or close to May the 31st. Okay. School year. Mm -hmm. The calendar school year, yes. Okay. I have a question on the uh, the start. We said it's going to be next Monday, the 19th. Yes. Of the program, and uh, I know you mentioned it's going to be 25 dollars a month per child. Uh, what is the age group that we're looking at? We're looking at six years old to 12 years old. So any age group, school age child. Yes. Okay, and, and uh, they're not they're going to provide their own transportation. I'm assuming, or uh, yes, they will provide their own transportation. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye opposed? Motion carries. Next uh, business in order is letter C. Number five, discussion and possible action to approve a no-cost lighting assessment report by EnviroLight Solutions, LLC. Yes, sir. Mayor Commissioners, uh, about three weeks ago, we got approached by some gentlemen, and there was 
it was kind of hard to believe because they, they said it was free, and we don't think anything is free. Uh, but they do have a, uh, an agreement with Duke Energy, and they are present here to to present to the okay. city what they've been going uh, to different school districts, cities, counties, hospital districts, in trying to to conserve energy. So, good Robert. Evening. Good evening, Mayor, and Council Hi. members. Uh, Ms. Banas, good evening. Um, my name is Robert Pena. I represent Duke Energy here in Stark County. I'm originally from Edinburgh and uh, started working in the wind business back in early 2001. Glad to be back home in the lower Granite Valley developing wind farms. Um, as we came into Stark County, one of the things that was um, asked of us as a, as a group, as a company, is to assist the region, to assist our, our counties, our school districts, our cities with energy conservation opportunities. Obviously, you see the wind turbines going up and renewable energy is a trend that is, um, you know, certainly gained a lot of attention. But in addition to the fact that we're creating tax base and we're creating jobs, it was asked of us to assist with some energy conservation. And as that became one of my tasks, I, I began to kind of look around and, and see what we could find that would be something good and beneficial to, uh, to the area. Um, make a long story short, um, I'm a school board member in Edinburgh also, and I'm sitting at a school board meeting and EnviroLight walked into us. <coughs> and, you know, uh, as we began to work through the program with them and learned about what they did, we now have six campuses and just approved five more campuses for LED lighting because now we've learned it saves us about almost 25% or a fourth of our energy consumption. So I've taken them back to Duke Energy and uh, spoken to Duke about it. Duke has found that based on the information that we've shared, it is something that they wanted to endorse and bring back to Star County. And what we have done is worked in agreement where by this uh, EnviroLight would come to the community and work on these assessments at no cost uh, to, to the entities, uh, which by the way, we've made our presentation to Star County Hospital and the assessment is underway. Uh, we've made our presentation to Rio Grande ISD and working on, on the next uh, assessment approval process with them. And um, we're pending uh, Commissioner's Court uh, agenda. So uh, we're, we're back in the area of uh, uh, giving you an opportunity to look at this. We think you'll find it feas uh, feasible and attractive. And also, you know, um, again, at no cost to at least assess and find uh, op lighting opportunities for you that are going to be far great, far better and newer technology in LED lighting. So um, with that said, uh, just a quick summary on the Duke Energy Project. We're about halfway done through construction. We've put up 125 turbines. We still have about another 100 to go, and we're developing our second project in Star County, soon to hopefully bring another $300 million investment into Star County. So um, I'll turn it over to EnviroLight with that. Okay, thank, thank you Thank you. Mayor, Council Members, uh, appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you about what EnviroLite Solutions has to offer. Um, as Robert had said, uh, what we do is we come in and we do a free assessment of your current lighting situation, uh, prepare an analysis, and then come back and present the results of our analysis. There is no obligation uh, on, on the city at all. If you decide that after we've done our assessment that you do, do not want to move forward, that, that's fine. But I think what will happen is when you see the results uh, of, the, of the analysis, it just makes a lot of financial sense to, to move forward with the project. That's what we're banking on anyways. And so why do, why do you want to go LED? Basically, when you look at the lighting uh, that you have around the city, and, and We've been here late at night. We've looked at the lighting throughout the city at night and looked at the lighting in the daytime in some of the buildings, uh, just as we were going through to uh, the hospital and going to the school district, we, we've seen uh, some of the things. I mean, immediately uh, we can start saving you money just on a few minor little fixes on some of your lights. Uh, it, for, for example, I noticed the sign right out here at the front uh, that you've got these 400 watt metal halides on your sign and they're on during the day and that's energy that you're losing and then there's other areas that are completely dark at night uh, we came through uh, 
this building in particular after we left the, the, the school district. And it was kind of dark. And I would hate to, to have employees walking out in the, you know, in, in the dark at, at night. There's a safety issue there. But LED lights can save you up, up to about 80% on your lighting portion of your bill. When you look at your energy bill, any energy bill that you look at, you, especially for buildings, you know, about 50 to 55% of your energy is your air conditioning, 25 to 30% of your energy bill is your lights, and the rest is all the other equipment. So if we can save you about 80% on your 25%, that's a 16% reduction on your energy consumption. Uh, we've got some results we'll even share with you in, 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 uh, in the booklet that, that I'll, I'll be giving you in, in just a moment uh, that show the, the actual results that we've had. Uh, not only can we save you energy, we can also help reduce health hazards. A lot of the lighting that you have is, is uh, fluorescent tubes. What a lot of people don't know about fluorescent tubes is that they are uh, mercury vapor is what creates the light. Mercury vapor is a neurotoxin, and that's why the EPA has now set forth guidelines on cleaning up uh, if a tube were to break, which includes also evacuating the area. Uh, you can't sweep it, mop it, vacuum it. You're supposed to use tape, put it into a sealed container, and then dispose of it as a biohazardous product. Uh, people just don't, don't realize that. I remember the days playing with mercury in my hand, you know, the little things, not realizing that it was not very healthy for me. Um, there's other uh, great factors uh, as well, which is uh, it lowers the heat in the building. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you were to touch one of these, uh, well, you probably wouldn't want to touch them. They're very, very hot. Uh, we can put our lights in. You can leave them on for the next 24 hours, 72 hours, doesn't matter. You can go up there, touch it, and it will actually feel cold to the touch because it burns at about 86 degrees compared to almost 200 degrees that these lights are burning. So if you think about it for a minute, if outside is 100 degrees and inside the lights are producing 200 degrees, how hard is your air conditioning working? So not only can we save you uh, energy on your lighting portion, but we can also start saving you money on your air conditioning portion. We proved that in several of the schools. If you go into the gymnasiums of the schools, uh, if you've ever been in a gymnasium, you know as you step on that court, on that basketball court, you know you start sweating. The heat is just really intense. That's because those lights are, are ranging between 250 to 300 degrees. Our lights are at 86 degrees, so it's actually a lot cooler. Because of that, some of the elementary schools that we have done for the Edinburgh School District actually were able to turn off some of their air conditioning units and not even have to turn them on, and the, the temperature in the gymnasiums was very comfortable. So they were able to save additional energy that way. Um, and of course, we mentioned about improving the lighting, which is, uh, especially your police chief, I'm sure he would be very happy about uh, the way that the LED lights look. It brings a much clearer light. Uh, any security cameras, they appreciate the, the clarity of the light that LED brings. Um, you know, and you know, especially in, in a room like this, the LED lighting would, would improve the lighting dramatically while reducing the, the temperature in here. So basically what we have to offer, we come in, we come and do a free assessment. That means we walk through all your buildings, we walk through all your parks, all the lights that are owned by the city. We then prepare a report, what you currently have, what we'd replace it with, and what the energy savings would be. We come back with that assessment, uh, we do offer financing options. We'll present that at the same time so that you can see that it will actually cost you nothing down and the energy savings that you will receive is greater than the cost of the, doing the retrofit. So that means if we can save you $10,000 in, in energy but it's only costing you $8,000 to do this project, you're putting back into your coffers about $2,000 a month. On average, so, how much will it take for us to recoup that initial expense? Uh, we won't know until after we've done the assessment, but we do give you an ROI. We'll tell you exactly Based what you're... Based on other cities, you know, the same size as ours, must, more or less, I mean, you're looking at, what, 10 years, 14, 15 years? Uh, no, usually about five to seven years. And that includes the financing and everything. 
So, and that's parts and labor. Uh, and all our lights do come with a five-year warranty, parts and labor. We come in, we do the install. It's a complete turnkey operation. If a light goes out for any reason, we come out and we replace it at no cost to the city for the first five years. Um, provided it's not vandalism or you know something like that. Right now, it's the initial assessment, which is, if I read this correctly, no cost. Absolutely no, no cost. Hidden cost. No, no hidden cost, no anything that fees or... Okay. Right. Just wanted to there, make there, sure. There's <laughs> absolutely no cost and no obligation. Okay. So, um, so what I'd like to do is give you a booklet. In the back, you'll see some pictures of some of the, the, the jobs that we've done, and you'll see the difference. So it's a, a significant difference. Mayor Commissioners, I know that Mr. Christian Here. Salinas can, can say that uh, he has a difficult time getting some good quality video of the meetings uh, with this lighting. So I know we also spoke about um, our new project, the 61-acre park. Yes. And you know, it's such a vast area and it is very dark at night. Yes. Uh, it's something that they said they could assist us in part of the assessment as a future project uh, so we can have a plan of action. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, for the city of Donna, which we're currently doing, uh, we're doing the entire city of Donna, the parks, every, every, all of their buildings, including the expressway for them as well. Um, and their energy savings was so significant that we were able to do several other projects for them and throw it in and it still not affect their budget one dollar because the savings was still greater than than the cost of doing the whole project so what we, when we when we met uh, we, we talked about doing some of the trails that you have and some of the parks where you have no lighting or very minimal lighting and actually being able to improve that but again I won't know that until we've until done the assessment okay yep. This action today, Mayor, would just authorize staff to, yeah. to start the process with our lights. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a moment, Mayor. We'll approve it. Okay. We have a motion Thank you. to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you very much. much. I'd like to uh, have to give you an open invitation as you, if you find yourself in Edinburgh to give me a call and I'd be more than glad to take you to any of those campuses that they've done their work and uh, show you what the results have been of some of the work there. Um, Duke Energy thanks you for the opportunity. We're going to stand side by side with them the whole way. Make sure they do a good job for you too uh, because our name is out there turning every day and um, particularly with the energy assessment we're going to work closely uh, on the energy assessment with Ms. Bayes as well. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your Next. Thank you. Next uh, business in order is letter D, discussion and possible action to approve a lease agreement with, uh, is it Andre Adame? Andrea Andre. Adame for premises at 405 East Mirasoles Street, Suites B and C, Lopez Tijerina Complex. Madam Commissioner, uh, Ms. Andrea Dame, she is occupying suite B and C, Dr. Lopez Tijerina. She is in full compliance, and we recommend renewal of her agreement. So move. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? Now, do we need a record vote on this, or, or what's this down here, Mr. No. no. No? Okay. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, aye opposed? Right, motion carries. Next uh, business in order is letter E, discussion and possible action to approve a lease agreement with Josefa Gonzalez for premises at 405 East Mirasole Suite E, Lopez Tijerina Complex. Mayor Commissioners, Ms. Gonzalez operates the insurance uh, office out of this uh, Suite E at uh, the Lopez Tijerina Complex. She is also in compliance with all the requirements and we do recommend renewal of her agreement. Okay. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? Further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye opposed. Aye motion carries. 
Next uh, business in order is letter F, a discussion and possible action to approve a lease agreement with Marco A. Rios for premises at 407 East Mirasoles Suites A and B, Lopez Tijerina Complex. Mayor, uh, Mr. Marco Rios also operates the business. This is right below the where the previous the EDC offices uh, were. They're at the Lopez Tijerina Complex. He's in full compliance with his insurance and we recommend renewal. Okay. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? For the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I hear you say aye. <laughs> all right. Uh, opposed? The motion carries. Next uh, business in order is letter G. Uh, discussion and possible action to approve a lease agreement with Melissa G. Perez, uh, Vintage Willow by Melissa for premises at 410 East. Main Street Suites A and B, Lopez Tijerina Complex. And if there's no objection on this one, if we can uh, discuss an executive session. No objection? Okay. We'll discuss an executive session. Do you need a motion? Do we need a motion to move it to okay. executive session? Yeah. Already, David. Uh, if there's no objection to it, you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, okay. If there's no objection, we'll move it to executive session. Next uh, business in order is number six, planning. Letter A, discussion and possible action on setback variance request by Pedro Arellano for a proposed carport to be located at 306 West Santa Maria Street. Madam Commissioners, this is a variance uh, request to planning and zoning. Uh, Mr. Milan presented this to the planning and zoning commission on October the 1st and it did get approved. Mr. Milan, any details on the project? Yes, uh, <coughs> items A, B, and C are were all approved on the last uh, planning and zoning meeting. <coughs> Sorry, uh, <coughs> this project was already commenced uh, almost to its completion, and we stopped by. We told the owner that uh, he needed to pull a permit and that he had to go through the process to be approved at zero setback. It's a carport. It's it's the shade. Uh, PNC did not hesitate to approve the permit. All right. Yeah, okay, we have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye opposed? And motion carries. Next uh, business in order is letter B. Discussion and possible action on request by the Naismith Engineering Incorporated for preliminary approval of the Walmart subdivision lot 1A and lot 4. Mr. Milan, is that the one for the Murphys or? Yes. That's correct, Mayor. Uh, this is to, uh, they had to reconfigure the whole Walmart subdivision in order to accommodate uh, and to configure the uh, parking lot numbers for both Walmart and the proposed new gas stations. Uh, as I understand this correctly, Walmart is selling the lot to Murphy USA. It's independent. That's why they had to re-flat uh, and reconfigure the parking spaces. According to both entities, there will be enough parking space. Uh, Again, uh, it's all been uh, studied. Uh, there's been traffic studies also. Uh, it's uh, they recommended for preliminary approval. Okay. Have a motion. So move. Okay, we have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? Discussion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. I opposed. The motion carries. Next uh, business in order is letter C. Discussion and possible action on request by. Sam Engineering for final approval of the Guillermo subdivision. That's 6C. This is, a, this is in our one mile ETJ, Mayor Commissioners. It's in the Ranchito del Norte, uh, behind North of where you live, Mr. Ramirez. They took a one, uh, a 10 acre track and subdivided it into eight tracks. I know that uh, it was reviewed by PNZ and our city engineer also. Okay. And it passed. And where, where is this located? Mi Ranchito del Norte. Oh, okay. And it was approved by right. right. planning and zoning. So. It was previously introduced, and they both uh, planning and zoning and city agendas, but because it, uh, it's been taking a while for them, they had to resubmit. Now they had the fundings to, uh, to finance whatever improvements uh, they had to do, so now they're ready for to start selling. Okay. Have a motion. Okay, we have a motion to approve. 
We have a second. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion on this item? For the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Next uh, business in order is uh, number seven, appointments and nominations. Letter A, discussion and possible action to nominate five persons to be considered on the ballot for the Stark County Appraisal District Board of Directors. Mayor Commissioners, I did invite Chief Appraiser uh, Ms. Rosalba Guerra. She was unable, she had a pre uh, prior commitment, uh, but we did go over this process. Every two years, board members uh, for the appraisal district are nominated by taxing entities. Uh, city Council can nominate anyone in the city to represent. On October 30th, after this, she receives all nominations from the taxing entities, she will send out the ballot. And you have attached there a timeline and the number of votes that the city has. And those are the votes that you would apply when you receive the ballot on October 30th. Uh, it's a process and it's done every two years and there's nine board members and the ones that you um, have here are the ones that are up for their terms uh, they're not necessarily the ones being nominated but just it's just uh, information to let you know these are the board members whose terms are up you can renominate or you can nominate anyone else okay but they they need to have uh, a nomination in two, three, four, seven. Seven. Well, Chief Appraiser, well, six. Three. Chief Appraiser, Rosalba Guerra, and Rene Montalvo, those are not on, on, the, on the ballot, but it's uh, Mr. Perez, Arturo Perez is the chair, currently the chair, Eduardo Ramirez, secretary, Loy Garza, director, Raul Peña, junior director, and Daniel J. Garcia, director. And these nominations have to occur by when? Uh, she would. She needed the nominations today, based on this timeline. Presiding officer, governing body, submit names and nominees. Uh, but she says she could wait for this week. Uh, if she does not receive any nominations, uh, she will proceed with the ballot process from the from the other taxing entities. And I think in the past um, we have not submitted any nominations. Yeah, we've never submitted them. Yes, our votes are very minimal. It is a discretion of this board if you want to nominate or some not nominate anyone. But as far as the timeline, really we're looking at today is what we're saying. Today. <coughs> and, and it's board, board approved or you can, you can submit you the names later? Submit the names and then later, let's say by tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or do we need? It is board approved. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't have a name at this point, so I have no nomination. Do you have anyone to nominate, Mr. Lerner? I'm sorry? Do you have anyone that you would like to nominate? Okay. We've always nominated uh, the same ones uh, from the school. Since they have a majority. Are you... you so do we need to pick five from here? No, at this point would be nominating... Uh, the five board members that are here. Or you can just choose to vote for the members that the school district nominated when the ballot is, is sent out at the end of the month. Do, okay. do we know who they are? I don't know who they are. I know Mr. Klein said that they had turned their nominations in, but I don't know who they were. I don't know. You can nominate the same members that are here or, or nominate different or... Well, right, but the, the point is that the timeline, they need this by... She said she would, uh, she was going to wait for this week based on not having the meeting today. Oh, okay. Because at, at this time, well, I would, I mean, if I'm going to nominate someone, but the nomination does not have to be these individuals, what you're telling me, right? Exactly. Okay. They don't have to be this. But it would be, of course, prudent to visit with those people before we do any nominations is what we're... They already serve, um, and obviously they, it, it appears that they represent taxing entities with a large number of votes, as okay. for the, the chart. Okay. 
Is Any nominations, gentlemen? We Another need to one. nominate five? We don't need to. We can just keep this one for the same with the school district. Okay. <coughs> okay. okay, so then at this point, uh, the motion would be. I think a motion to keep the same one for the school nominated. Sure. I'll take it. We have a motion, we have a second. Any further discussion? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? My motion carries. Next uh, business in order is uh, letter B, discussion and possible action to appoint the city's local rabies control authority as required by the Texas Department of State Health Services. And that is would be Mr. Milan. Right? Yes, Mayor, Commissioners, uh, Mr. Milan is a licensed animal control officer, <coughs> and uh, we're recommending that he be the local rabies control authority for the city. Okay, so move, Mayor. <coughs> have a motion to approve. We have a second. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Did I hear you say aye? <laughs> All right. Uh, once again, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I don't say anything means aye. Uh, well, <laughs> sir. <laughs> all right, motion carries. Letter, next uh, business in order is uh, letter C, discussion and possible action to appoint seven members to the Main Street Advisory Board. Letter C. Yes, sir. Um, there is a handout. And we do have Ms. Belinda. Is that Belinda behind hand you? Out, hand out. <coughs> Thank you. The Main Street Board has been uh, inactive for some time, and so we are restarting it now that we have our new Main Street coordinator. And uh, the, this is the nominations for recommendations. Okay. She did talk to each one of them. They are willing to participate. <coughs> We have Ms. Maria Rebecca Garza with Texas Cafe, Ms. Rosa Gonzalez, RE Supplies, Rafael Berlanga, El Valle Bakery, Oscar Gonzalez, uh, Tequilas and Real Brewing Company, Robert Diaz, Dark County Adult Probation, Patricio Hernandez, Grandy Garbage, Melissa Andrade, Casa de Adobe. <coughs> um, and this is an advisory board. Yes, sir. The one year term? Yes, sir. Okay. We have a motion that we would approve the, uh, the recommendation. Okay, we have a motion to approve yes. the recommendation. We have a second. Further discussion on this item? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Next uh, business in order is uh, city manager's report. Um, and that uh, if if there's no objection, we want to discuss this on an executive session? No, sir. Uh, you're going to skip this item. Okay. We're going to move to item 9, Mayor. Okay. So at this time, we're moving to no, uh, we're item 9. We'll come back to <laughs> item 8. And it's uh, executive session, Chapter 551, Texas Government Code Section 551.071, uh, Consultation with Attorney, Section 551.072, Deliberations Regarding Real Property, and section 551.074, personnel matters. And it is 7.24 p.m. Back from executive session, uh, it's 8.28 p.m. And we're returning back to uh, number five, letter G. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, I make the motion that we extend the contract for 30 days, that during those 30 days we allow it to uh, uh, take care of the balance owed on the lease agreement. Okay. And, uh, and that, uh, or that we take that action before considering uh, renewing the contract. Okay. Have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion on this item? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next uh, business in order is number eight, letter A. 
Uh, Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that uh, we return to the previous uh, vacation leave policy uh, with a maximum payout of uh, 240 hours. Okay. Have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion on this item? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next uh, business in order is uh, the record letter A, B, C, and D. There was no action. An executive session and uh, letter E discussion and possible action regarding prospect 2015 6. No action. And then we have letter E, which is discussion and possible action regarding the position of city manager. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I make the motion that uh, we authorize uh, uh, city personnel to move on with uh, the advertisement of the position. Okay, we have a motion. I'll turn the motion. We have a second to pursue the uh, position or advertisement for city manager. Any further discussion on this item? Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> carries. Next uh, business in order or was letter G and there was no action, which is discussion and possible action regarding personnel and employment matters. This time, there's no objection. Meeting's adjourned. I move no. that we adjourn this oh. meeting. We have a motion to adjourn the meeting. We have a second. Any further discussion on this item? For the discussion, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. aye opposed? And carries. Meetings adjourned. It is 8.30 p.m. Thank you for being here today.